What's going on everybody, guys and gals, all throughout the world, salute to you. Salute means hello, how's it going? I wish you health and happiness. This is Yerba Mate, my name's Dave Mate, and today we're just going to do a little, I don't know, freestyle on getting started with Yerba Mate. Many of you guys have seen tons of my videos, dozens of my videos over the past several years, but... With that said, I'm still getting emails constantly from people asking, you know, Dave, how do I do this? How do I do that? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I'm truly happy to help. So I don't mind to continue to make more videos, even going over things I've gone over in the past because there's such an influx of new Yerba Mate drinkers. What I like to call Materos. And Matero is a passionate Yerba Mate drinker who really embraces Yerba Mate as a lifestyle, as a way of living. Uh, someone that just respects this plant, respects it as more than just a tea, and understands that when you drink yerba mate, you feel really good. When you drink yerba mate, you're just nicer and kinder to people. When you drink yerba mate, you try to include people more in what you're doing. You try to express yourself better. You try to do a better job at whatever it is your creative outlet is. Perhaps it's writing, perhaps it's uh, painting. You're a mathematician, engineer, teacher, nurse, doctor, philosopher, who knows, entrepreneur. Mate seems to just enhance that. So that's why we call ourselves Materos. It's just a way of life, embracing this herb. I'm drinking it the most traditional way, out of a gourd. Uh, so let's start here with the gourd. The most traditional way of drinking your mate, but you don't have to drink it this way. I drink it this way because I love it. It's easy, it's fun. You just add the herb in here. Uh, you add something called a bombilla or bombisha, metal straw in here. You add the, uh, the hot water every single time out of a thermos. Here you go. And then you just keep on drinking it like this. In a few moments, I'm actually going to uh, do a step-by-step -step instruction on how to make your bamati out of the gourd. But here you go. Here's a little taste. So a lot of the new people I noticed, a lot of people who are just finding out about mate, they get intrigued with the gourd. They want to start drinking it this way. This way is really cool. It's really fun. It's intriguing. Uh, you don't see your average person drinking uh, herbs or particular teas out of a gourd like this. But yet, this has been done for thousands of years. It's just a modern way. Now, you could drink mate out of a French press. Just make it how you would make uh, coffee out of a French press. Uh, same thing goes for a tea infuser. Uh, same thing goes for a teapot. Or if you don't have any of those tools, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. All you need is a pot and some source of heat. Let's call it a stove, okay? You get a pot. You add hot water in that pot. You let the water get really hot. No, no, don't let it fully boil. You add some mirba mate on top. Kill the heat. Put a plate on top to let it infuse for 5 to 10 minutes. Get a strainer. Get a mug. And you're set. You have yerba mate instantly. You don't need any of these tools and... French presses and Chemexes and Yerba Mate gourds, Mabisha, those things are cool, they're extra, but don't let that stop you from, from getting started with Yerba Mate. Now, let me just run down on a couple of the health benefits of Yerba Mate. Uh, Yerba Mate just makes you feel better. Uh, millions of Yerba Mate drinkers throughout the world have noted that Yerba Mate just makes you feel better, makes you feel brighter, uh, enhances your mood. Now, getting into a little bit of the science, mate uh, helps you uh, lower bad cholesterol, uh, protects your heart, cleans your arteries, uh, fights cancer cells, uh, improves sleep, improves digestion. Uh, it helps you feel uh, sated, so you don't feel as hungry as you normally would. Um, it gives you the sense of you know feeling full almost without even eating. It's like you don't want to eat when you drink your mate. So that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, anti-obesity, uh, helps people manage their weight, lose weight, naturally enhances uh, metabolism, uh, enhances liver and kidney functions. It's just really, really good. Uh, everything that I'm saying has been quantified. I'm not just saying it out there. There's studies that have quantified everything that I just mentioned uh, throughout scientific studies. Uh, the most uh, comprehensive study would be by Elvira de Mejia, Dr. Elvira de Mejia. Uh, a comprehensive review of Yerba Mate. Look into that study, which goes over everything I just mentioned. Um, all right, so I literally just got an email 10 minutes ago from somebody in Argentina, somebody visiting Argentina. A lot of people like to go and visit Argentina. That's when they find out about Mate. Because remember, Mate is mostly consumed in Argentina, 
Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay, um, probably 85 plus percent of the, of the populations of those countries consume at least one liter of yerba mate a day. So we're talking about tens of millions of people every single day. Uh, let's call it, I don't know, I don't want to give you exact figure, but 10 million, 20 million, maybe 30 million people in South America, and that might that figure might be low, drink yerba mate every single day because you have to imagine there's at least 25 million people in Argentina drinking mate every day. Uh, Uruguay, the entire country, is about 3 million people. So let's call that 2.5 million people every single day drinking yerba mate because about 90% of the population drinks it there. Uh, then we have Paraguay. That's several million right there who drink yerba mate every single day. And then we have southern Brazil, the three southernmost states of Brazil, where mate is essentially, uh, for all intents and purposes, the national drink there. So that's another 10, 20, maybe 30, 40 million people drinking it there, maybe more. So, yes, tens of millions of people are drinking yerba mate every single day, and they're loving it. They're feeling great. It's just a part of their culture in South America. It's starting to expand. Uh, the irony is, is that it's been expanding uh, outside of South America for over a hundred years, but it still hasn't caught on yet. People still don't really know uh, what this powerful herb is, yerba mate, in terms of drinking it, and it's not as ubiquitous as green tea and black tea and coffee. Uh, but when people find out about it, you start drinking it, you just feel great. You don't want to stop drinking it. Now, some people may ask, is it addictive? Well, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but from my own studies, addiction has more to do with inherent traits within a particular person like you could be addicted to anything anybody can be addicted to anything it's just do you have uh those tendencies now for me no i'm not addicted to mate uh are other people addicted who knows i don't know but at the end of the day i would call it a beautiful addiction if anything it's just like it's healthy it makes sense to drink it every single day most people do drink it every single day materos so all right guys and gals let's do a little quick demonstration on how to drink yerba mate the traditional way out of a gourd using a bombisha and a thermos so that's all you're going to need you're going to need yourself a gourd it could be a metal gourd it could be a wooden gourd it could be a traditional calabash gourd like so this is literally a squash plant then you're going to need a bombilla or bombisha depending on how you want to pronounce it in argentina and uruguay they pronounce a bombisha Bambisha. The double L is more of like a sha or ja sound. Uh, and everywhere else in the world, they usually say bambia. I lived in Argentina for over three years. That's the Spanish that I learned, so I speak that dialect, the uh, Rio Plata dialect of uh, Espanol or Castellano. So I say bambisha in, uh, instead of, I was about to say, in this day, which means instead of in Spanish, but instead of bambia. So that's all you're going to need. If you guys want to drink it the traditional way, you're going to need a gourd, you're going to need a bombisha, and you're going to need a thermos or any source of hot water. If you don't have any of those things, yes, go on over to circleofdrink.com. Check out the gourds tab. You're going to see something that says gourds on top of the, 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 the page and check that out. You could buy kits, you could buy gourds, you could buy bombishas. Uh, you could buy a yerba mate, everything you need, circleofdrink.com. If you're checking it out from your phone right now, it's a little funny on the phone. Uh, we're working on that. We're redoing the whole site. It's going to look beautiful on the phone soon. So I would suggest making your purchases and reading the articles and things like that uh, through your desktop computer or through your iPad for now. In the future, come back on your phone and it'll look great. All right, guys, let's do it. I'm Dave Mate. Let's get into it. All right, good people. Let's get going. Let's get cracking. Let's get building. So, what do we need? We need water, regular room temperature water. That's called dummy water. It doesn't make you a dummy. It just makes you smart, actually. You need yerba mate. I like Argentine yerba mate the most. So you'll always find me drinking a lot of Argentine mate. Argentine mate is mate that has a coarse cut like this. It has the inclusion of stems. This is actually a big stem. Uh, it has the inclusion of powder, some of the really super fine particles, and the inclusion of obviously coarse cut uh, leaves, or hojas, as we say in Spanish. And we got yourself a gourd. This is the most traditional calabash gourd. Calabash means squash plant 
in Argentina or calabaza, but we say calabash in English, calabaza in Castellano, and we have a uh, bombilla or bombisha. This is a spoon variety. This is the variety you want in terms of being able to use this for any sort of yerba mate cut, any sort of cut composition. So it doesn't matter if it's super fine mate, like gaucho mate from southern Brazil or Uruguay, where they have it grown in southern Brazil. That's called gaucho mate. Super fine. It doesn't matter if it's that mate or Argentinian mate with the coarse cut leaves like this or Paraguayan mate, which is a combination of very fine and coarse cut leaves. Doesn't matter. With the spoon bombilla, you could actually use this for any sort of mate you can imagine. That's why every mate drinker that's serious should have at least one spoon bombilla. Now the ones with the more holes, you know, that's good for super fine mate called Shimahau or Vimach, which is a subcategory of mate. Well, I hate to call it a subcategory. It's not really a subcategory, but it's a category of mate that's native to Brazil. That's another topic. You could Google that. Look into my other videos. Uh, Erva Mach, E R V A M A T E, two words, Erva Mach. Look into my videos on that and you can read up all about that. Okay, this video is simply about getting started with Yerba Mate and making a gourd. So let's get into it. Gotta have to maneuver a little. So you wanna, let me zoom in, get you a better situation. Oh, right. That's cool right there. So a lot of people ask, how much mate do I put in the gourd? The general rule of thumb is three quarters of the gourd should be full with the yerba mate. Three quarters. Half at least, I would say. Well, big gourd like this, you know, it also has to do with how much mate do you want to drink. There's a lot going on in the dynamics of the gourd. I call that the uh, the, the gourd or the mate ecosystem. Because remember, this is also called a mate. This device, this vessel is also called a mate. So really, up to you, it's up to you how much mate you want to put in there. I usually put about a half to three quarters. This is a really big gourd, so I'm intentionally going to put a little bit less. And also, I don't have enough mate right here on me, so that's kind of my excuse. But let's see what happens. All right. So this will give you the idea of what's going on here. All right, so I fill this up. Let's call that half. It's not really half, but let's call it about halfway. There you go. You can see inside there pretty well. All right. So the next thing you need to do, which is the fun part, is you need to invert the gourd. Invert it. Turn it upside down and give it a couple soft shakes up and down motion. You hear that? It's like a little ritual, a little dance. Da, 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 da. Okay, now you want to bring this back on a 45 degree angle and let's see what happens. You see that? Boom. See that? You see that? So let me explain what's going on here. The reason you did this was to bring the smaller particles to the top because when you inverted it, and you shook it, the smaller particles came technically to the bottom when you were shaking it, but now as you re, uh, re, re-inverted it, I hope that's a word, re-inverted it, turned it right side up, you have the actual smaller particles on the top of the gourd, leaving the larger particles on the bottom of the gourd that acts as a natural filter. It helps aid filtration. And another little thing, a little, another little secret for you guys is that the white stems are actually sweeter than the actual uh, leaves, so that helps to make the mate sweeter on the bottom, which is a nice little trick. Naturally sweeter. Also, one of the main reasons why I shook it like that was to create the water hole. If you maintain the 45 degree angle, which you should, you'll see that this, there's a void right here. Okay, This is your mountain of mate, and this is the water hole, the void. This is where you actually pour water. So. It doesn't need to be perfect, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sit it down until I prepare the mate, the dummy water. So I can just sit it down on a 45 degree angle. I just put it back down like that. See? All is well. Now get yourself dummy water. Dummy water is water that is just room temperature or slightly heated. We're adding this to the, to the actual water hole. Let me try to get a better view. Alright, so it takes a little bit of uh, dexterity, but you get the hang of it in time. 
just dump that into the water hole, okay? See? It's going right into the water hole, and I'm maintaining that mountain of mate. Let it come all the way up like that, that's fine. Notice, this mate here is dry. This is the water hole. Get yourself your bombilla and follow the line of the water hole. See, I'm following the line. Follow that curvature of the gourd. Put it down there, then kind of tuck it up a little bit. Okay, it doesn't need to look pretty right now, it's fine. And there you go. The reason you use the, the dummy water was to temper the mate. So you're preserving the vital nutrients of the mate for when you add the hot water, the mate essentially will be protected. And it kind of just gets the mate going. Kind of like what you do in coffee when you add a little bit of water on top and it creates that bloom, if you will. Opens up the, the, the molecules. It's kind of like the Maillard effect when you're applying heat to something and you're preparing it to begin to uh, evolve into flavors. It's various flavors, various chemicals and compounds, aromatics. Same thing here. You're kind of preparing for that to happen gracefully by adding the dummy water first. So you let that sit for about 30 seconds or so. Let it absorb. Then you want to get yourself hot water. Now when I say hot water, it's water that's just been heated up to about 165, 175 degrees, maximum 180. And just add that to the top, like so. See that? You're adding it to the water hole. This is your mountain of mate here. It's relatively dry. This is the water hole that's been filled with the water now. And there you go. That's your mate. Now, after every time you drink, go ahead and drink now. Right now I'm drinking, so I disappeared. You want to just drink it to the end. Until you hear this slurp. Hear that slurp? That's actually polite to slurp like that. It means you're done. It means you didn't leave any backwash in there. Okay, so a lot of, specifically I received the question about how do I maintain the mountain of mate from somebody today. So here you go. Whoa. Dropping things. This is how you maintain it. It's so simple. Nothing to even stress about. You literally just take the bambisha out every couple times, every couple cycles. The cycles every time you completely finish the mate in each gourd. And you just push this. You just push it, push it, push it. Push it to the side, push it to the side, push it forward. To the point where you can literally take this out and look at the bottom. The lighting's not that great, but I can literally see to the bottom of this gourd right now. And that's how you maintain the mountain of mate. You just push. Okay, and then you see that? It's like cement now. It's not going anywhere. This is like cement. Look, I'm shaking this around. It's not going anywhere. It's perfectly situated. Perfectly fixed. Okay, then just insert the bombisha back. Tuck it under a little bit. Okay. Then go ahead and grab your hot water, mate water. That's very hot, but not fully boiled. You're not making pasta. Just very hot water. Add it back to the water hole. You see that? Boom. And that's it. Every time. Rinse and repeat. Enjoy. Feel great. Yerba Mate, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone in the world getting into Mate. You guys rock. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helped. This is just a little quick video on how to prepare Yerba Mate. And some of my thoughts on what's going on in the Mate world. All right, guys and gals, have a good one. Take care. If you have any more questions, just uh, shoot me a comment below this video, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, or circleofdrink.com. Uh, we'll be more than happy to help you out with any questions. All right, salud. Enjoy your mate. Bye-bye.